Welcome back to this video tutorial about making vehicles in PS and now we are going to focus on the animation for the hatches and the turret as well as the hull MG. We left off in the last video with the anim graph that was missing. Turned out it was very easy. You just have to double click on anim graph and it will bring your anim graph up there. So now that this is done, I have copy paste uh, all the event graph from the tiger over to my king tiger and I took all the anim graph that I copied over to my anim graph here. The only thing that I have made different is this vehicle is using one hatch here that goes up and rotates as well as one here that goes up and rotates and the hull gunner is doing the very same. One thing though to note uh, for this tutorial is we will not animate the hull gunner. The reason is it wasn't rigged and this is the only one that was rigged. So this asset will have to go back into rigging so the rigger will actually skin that hatch. So in this tutorial we will do the driver's hatch and the commander's hatch. It will be the exact same principle for the other side. So that being said, what I've done is I've took the system for the commander hatch, copy pasted it here and made the bone hatch driver um, affected by those two bones. And I've also made new variables uh, here. So we have three for the driver, three for the commander, and then technically we'd need another three for the hull gunner when the rig is fixed. What you need to also change here is I've copy pasted that system for hatch rotation three, which is the commander. I've copied that system, pasted it here, used the proper variables here, and I switch it to hatch rotation zero, which would be the driver, zero for driver, one for gunner, two for hull gunner, and three for commander. And I've also changed the set here to be the one from the driver and not from the commander. That being said, now we need to define the animation properties on these hatches. So let's go with the driver first. So we go in the anim graph, we select the driver, hatch rise alpha. So this is how high the hatch is gonna move up. So I'm going to unplug my alpha, compile. I'm gonna make it go up something like five. Uh, in real life, it would go all the way up to here, I would imagine. So it'd go above that little periscope which we're not going to do because we don't have the model. The model was not made with that in mind. So let's go to five. It's going to clip through, which is all right. We can survive. And when my elevation is done, I'm going to replug my alpha in and hit compile again. Same thing for the rotation. Unplug here, compile. I am going to rotate that. Oops, shit, wrong one, sorry. I'm going to select this guy and do it from that value here. I'm going to rotate it that way all the way to something like this. That would be around minus 240 degrees. And that actually, keep in mind that this value is actually going to be a problem. I'm not going to fix it right now. I'm going to go through the problem on purpose and then we'll get back to it and get that issue fixed. So I'm going to hit compile again after replugging my alpha. It's going to go back to default. Yes. And we are going to do the exact same thing for the commander. So the hatch rise, how much this bone is supposed to go up. Oops, I forgot to hit compile. That is my bad. Compile. How much is the bone supposed to go up? Something like that much. So let's say eight. Hit compile. Unplug this alpha, hit compile. How much it is going to rotate? So by default, uh, from the tiger, it was 109 degrees. Let's do it ourselves. So it's going to do something like this, I guess until here. So let's say 170 degrees. Maybe not, maybe you wouldn't open it the old way. Maybe it would just go until 130 degrees. Replug my alpha and compile save and let's test our system. So we should have an error on the driver's seat and we should have a perfectly functioning one on the commander's seat. Let's double check. So this one should be good. Yeah, it moves up and then it rotates. If you use the gunner, it doesn't rotate only for the commander. That is on purpose. That is, um, 
little bit like if you are the gunner the commanders are in your turn now you don't want that hatch to move again so it's only the commander that's going to make it move and let's look at this guy so you would expect it to rotate this way and i think it's going to rotate the other way around yes so this is the mistake i was talking about so the reason is fairly simple and um, we just hack our way around so it is to rotate here so let's plug unplug my alpha and recompile so the reason is it's a bit silly uh, maybe there's a better way around it but so far what we've decided is if you do an animation for more than 180 degree let's say you go for 100 and let's say 200 degrees all the way until here the software is actually going the other way around because this is shorter so it's going to go for the shorter route so what we actually do is you define a first 179 degrees and let's say we are going to 240 so that means we need an extra 60 degrees then we just have another one that just doing the, the extra 60 degrees it's a bit hacky but it works so basically what we do we would make this one go all the way to 179 here and then we just duplicate this bone oops wrong one this bone here we just plug it here and this bone would just do an additional minus 40 degrees so yeah that is a bit hacky but it gets a job done so now if i hit compile let's give it a try Wonderful. Okay, so this is the animation. Let's try our turret. It should work with the copy paste we've done. Perfect. Oh yeah, it's going to glitch because I'm using a French keyboard and Q and A are different. So I have the I can zoom, but if I press Q it's going to zoom and turn. So disregard that bug. But that is working. Our sight is working. I can fire the bone, the cannon to recoil. It's recoiling, but it's a bit shy. I think it should recoil more. It's a very big gun. So if I want to recoil, to increase the recoil on the bone, I would do the same thing that I've done so far. I would go to the bone cannon recoil here, unplug my alpha, compile, define how much recoil I want so that would be zero recoil and then I can define how far the gun is going to go in so let's look at something that could be realistic uh, for such a big gun I mean it's a big turret so I would expect it to recoil maybe that much would have to check online and find a reference which might be complicated for a king tiger but yes let's say minus 65 Plug this back in, hit compile, it should go back. There we go. Last thing we haven't checked was the hull gun to make sure that this is properly done. Let's get in. So again, we haven't animated this guy, so it's gonna stay static. And now I can move around. I think I'm missing an exit. Let's check if the exit was made correctly for this guy. At least the animation was proper. Let's go here. It's going to be in seats. It's number two for the hull gunner. Hull gunner exit, and I'm pretty sure there is a typo here. HT exit. So you see the issue I was at the origin of the world is because it couldn't find an exit point. So this is actually supposed to be named the same as here, Hulgener exit, or if I go default, HG exit, oops, almost there. So let's look at the Sherman, let's see which naming we used because we don't want to improvise on this, it needs to be nice and clean. 
Så det er Halganer on this guy. Number two. It's Halganer exit. Okay, so that was actually correct. This is the problem. There we go. So now we can go through our checklist, make sure we've covered everything. So we've created the, the entry spheres, we've created the exit spheres, and we assigned the seats. Copy paste the turret palm that we've done in the previous video. We've assigned a seat for one gunner, seat one for gunner. We've copy paste all the sockets from existing tanks, and we've drag and drop view modules. These are the view modules here. So this concludes our uh, animation part. Let's just make sure before we conclude that this is correct. We have the physical asset with the kinematic. We have this SQ handler. We have the event graph and the anim graph done. And we right click and set and create on yo and elevation. We've done this, we have done a recoil, we have done, we don't have rollers on this tank, but imagine on a Sherman, you have rollers. Uh, let's look at it. So basically those little wheels here, they are not simulated physically. So what we do is we just tell the game, whatever rotation this guy is doing, this guy is getting the same. So it's like a copy animation. So we copy the animation from this guy and these are just blindly doing the same. So we don't have that problem. We define the wheel properties. So this one, we can have a quick look now. So the, the wheel properties is the radius of the wheels. So the tiger is very similar to the king tiger. So we are going to reuse those properties. But imagine you have a, a, a tank with very small wheels like the Churchill or a tank with very big wheels like the panther or the tiger. You go in vehicle movement. And then you should have wheel set up here. Glider. So here it's very important that you go wheel left wheel right. It's always left and right, left and right, left and right. If you go right and left, you're going to be in a world of shit and that is not going to work. So this is very important. Left first, right next. Uh, then we have the BP Tiger E wheel that is plugged in. So let's have a look at that BP. It's a very basic thing with them. Um, you have like the radius of the shape, etc etc so this you shouldn't have to tweak because the radius of the wheel is going to be the same on the king tiger than it was on the actual tiger but at least you know where it is and then we have the rear wheel and the front wheel here so we have the rear wheel rear wheel and the front wheel so these are the sprocket literally and again it's a similar one to the tires so we don't have to relink everything we are going to reuse the same uh, values so this we don't have to do. Always start with left wheel and then right wheel. And then assign the physic asset to the skeletal mesh inside the BP. It should already be done because the vehicle was falling to the ground. Just let's make sure. Uh, I think I think it's already done in the, in the skeleton. It is here. And then you should have physics. It is assigned, so this is correct. And then define the mass scale inside the vehicle mesh. So this is something we haven't done. It is <coughs> how heavy uh, the tank is. And this has nothing to do with the handling. It is just for ramming. So if a little Jeep is getting into that vehicle, the vehicle is not going to move. However, if the ta King Tiger is hitting a Jeep, then the Jeep is going to move because the mass is going to be um, smaller. So this is set in here. And I think it is mass. Let's, I don't remember whether or not where that is. Weight. No, okay, hold on. Let me see. Inside the vehicle BP. So maybe it's actually here. If I can't find it quickly enough, I will put it in the description of the video. But it shouldn't be too hard to find found it until now, so um, damn, I don't remember. So I think it's mass. No, it's not mass. I tried already. Uh, so no weight, mass. How did I name it? Scale.
Huh. Okay, I can't find it for now. I will just put it down in the description and then you can find that value. I'll see you guys in the next video.